Uh, Tuesday, March 17th to order. Uh, Jane, could you do your roll call, please? Okay, Joe Albert is not here. Jill Kravitz is not here. Donna Corbin Savinsky. Here. I am here. Elizabeth Davis. Here. John Hayes. Here. And Frank Alamo, Robert Chagno, and Joe Perello are not here. Thank you. <clears throat> For the fire evacuation procedures, in case there is a fire or an emergency, there are two ways to exit the chambers. To my left through the exit, um, chamber doors, turn left and walk down the stairs and out the building, of course. And then, or you can exit to the rear of the chambers. Um, in either case, once you're out of the building, walk a safe distance away from the building and uh, wait for assistance. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. <clears throat> Next on the agenda is public hearings, which there is none. Uh, public participation for issues of concern not on the agenda. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to speak? Nope, doesn't appear that way. Uh, any correspondence, Jenny? represent Raffia Farms. That's the second generation farm in town. Um, um, and they mainly in the past have done the majority of them tobacco. Um, they got a grant, which is very hard to do from the uh, Department of Agriculture, State Department of Agriculture. And they're going to be restoring um, almost four acres of land. Uh, it's wooded it has been um, in the past in the 1930s, up until the 1930s, maybe vegetables, and they just let it go fallow. Now they have a grant that allows them to um, farm it again. And as you know, uh, agriculture is mostly exempt from agriculture is mostly exempt from um, wetlands. I did ask Attorney Urbanowitz if uh, they were going to leave the stumps in, and he said, um, I asked him to let me know in the letter, and he did. He said that they're going to leave it around the border to hold the soil in, and they will grow cover uh, crops when the plants are not being um, uh, in season until the uh, four acres are totally uh, acclimated to vegetables. And I told him that would be a, a problem. Uh, I asked that he submit something that I could present to you. And um, I told him if you had any questions or concerns, I'd bring them back to him. But I think if you read that, you will find that uh, they're going above the minimum of what's required. Um, I couldn't see any problems with it. But again, I told him I would bring it to you. And if you had any questions or concerns, I think it's great vegetables versus tobacco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I think that's it. Okay. Does anybody have any questions or concerns regarding this? Um, mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the next is commissioner's correspondence. Does anybody have anything to like to? Jane, Liz? Mm -hmm. No. No? Mm -hmm. Okay. We're good. <clears throat> the next on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from February 17th. Do I have a motion? I'll move to approve the minutes from the Tuesday, March, shoot, what was the date? February. <laughs> For, pardon me, February 17th, 2015, as um, included in our packages. And I will second it. Thank you. Any discussion? No. No? Everybody's all set? Uh, roll call? Or just vote? Hand vote? We're going to know. <laughs> All, those All those in favor? Four to zero. Okay. Next on the, there's no old business. Is there any reports from the officers, committees, or staff? No. No, we're good. Okay. There's no old business and then new business now. 
be good. Uh, we, we're going to review um, Inland Wetlands Number 539.02, Modification of Approved Plans for Proposed Medical Building at 160 Hazard Ave, Hunting and Chase Development, LLC Owner. Uh, if you're here in the audience, could you come forward and state your name and... Just sit right up here or... Yes, please. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening for the record. My name is TJ Baresi. I'm a licensed engineer and licensed land surveyor. I'm employed at Ed Lally Associates. Our office is located in the town of Windsor. Sit down in here representing Huntington Chase Development regarding 160 Hazard Avenue. Uh, the application is for a modification to an existing permit. The original permit was issued in September 2010 to TP Rentals LLC. Uh, recently, that uh, permit was transferred to Huntington Chase Development LLC, I believe last month. Uh, tonight, we're here regarding the modification of that existing permit. Uh, first, I'll just give you a general older, overview of uh, what was approved in the past, and then I'll point out the modifications since that approval. Uh, property is located on the south side of Hazard Avenue, uh, east of the Enfield Professional Center. Um, Hazard Avenue runs in an east-west direction. Parcel is located in the BP zone, contains 3.720 acres, and is presently overgrown with mixed dense growth and small trees. Do you have plans in front of you? <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> I, I forgot to bring an easel. I'm, I apologize. <laughs> I thought I'd be standing up putting out a few things. Um, uh, the topography of the land generally slopes towards Hazard Avenue and towards the east. Um, everything drains towards the north uh, which uh, to, to an existing 36-inch culvert, which drains the property um, across Hazard Avenue uh, in a northerly direction. There's two wetland areas on the property. One is in the west side of the property. One is on the east side of the property. Uh, both areas were created from excavation of ditches to intercept runoff from uh, the abutting properties, and those ditches then rooted the water uh, to that existing 36-inch culvert, which goes across ha Hazard Avenue. There are 0 0.117 acres of wetlands on the site. The property is uh, uh, supported by public water, gas, and sewer, all of which is available on Hazard Avenue. The proposal is to construct a 24,160-square-foot medical building. Uh, accessed by a single bituminous drive off of Hazard Avenue. There will be bituminous parking on all three sides of the building. Uh, grading is done in a manner to provide positive runoff away from the building, and the grading would then uh, run up towards the uh, uh, existing swales and, and new swales on the east and west side of the property, which will then route the water to the north side of the property to a retention area, and then eventually to the existing 36-inch culvert, and again across um, Hazard Avenue. A uh, formal drainage system is proposed for the developed area in the parking lot. Roof leaders will be going to the uh, culverts, uh, to the uh, catch basins, or to the uh, new swales. Um, and again, all those uh, will then eventually be rooted towards the uh, retention area on the north side and to the 36-inch culvert. A stormwater analysis was prepared. Uh, the results of that is that there's no increase in the rate of runoff uh, to all points of the property. Building will be served by public water and sewer. All utilities will be underground. Uh, regarding landscaping, trees and shrubs are proposed throughout. Um, the, there'll be landscaping around the building, which will be irrigated. Uh, the landscape buffer along the south and the southeast property lines um, were laid out uh, in accordance with the town specifications. All swales and retention areas will be vegetated with, with grasses and wetland enhancement plants. Uh, these plants types were selected by a soil scientist to promote habitat. Uh, the result is that a, a site with the aesthetic and habitat value of valuable plantings. Uh, regarding erosion controls, uh, there's uh, an abundance of erosion, erosion controls throughout. Uh, silt fence, construction entrance pads, silt sacks, uh, all outlets are protected with um, riprap um, or uh, silt fence during construction process. Uh, temporary and permanent silt traps are proposed throughout. All disturbed areas will be seeded and all erosion controls will remain in place until the site is stabilized. Well, that's the general overview, um, which was approved uh, back in 2010. Um, recently, uh, since the uh, uh, permit was transferred, uh, there's been some modifications to the plan, mostly in response to staff and the engineering department. Um, and I'd like to point those out at this point in time. Um, a small vestibule uh, and a patient drop-off area was added on the east side of the building. Uh, and the parking area in this spot was also modified and reconfigured to allow patient drop-off. A sidewalk was uh, added along the entrance drive to connect the sidewalk on Hazard Avenue to the 
sidewalk around our building. Painted crosswalks and other pavement markings were added to the plans. Uh, the dumpster enclosure, which was originally approved to be a chain link fence, uh, is now um, masonry walls. And part of that was to um, help uh, screen it and protect it from the adjacent um, residential areas to the south. That was in response, that was a direct uh, uh, request from the town planner. Uh, landscape buffering between the dumpster and the adjacent residential areas uh, was increased to allow better uh, buffering. The snow storage area, which originally was on the south side in that landscaped area, has now been moved to um, a, a bank of parking spaces to get it out of the uh, buffer area. Um, a screen loading space was added right next to the dump dumpster area. Fire lane signage and hydrant has been added to increase public safety at the uh, fire marshal's request. A provision for a bike rack has been added in the event um, a town-wide bike path system is installed in Hazard Avenue. There'll be a place on our site for uh, uh, bikes to be stored. Uh, the temporary sill traps um, were um, added, and erosion controls were all beefed up to protect the adjacent wetlands. Uh, originally, the, the, there was a, a depression on the eastern side of the property that was inside the buffer area, and that was shifted outside of that buffer area. Uh, the construction sequence was modified. Uh, the uh, detail of the wing wall near the Hazard Avenue uh, was added, and the wing wall was originally just uh, a rectangle. Now it's reconfigured in the L shape, and that was at the request of, uh, I believe, the town engineer, and a detail of that was added to the plans. Uh, Topsoil and excess storage material storage piles um, were moved outside the buffer area. Um, let's see, additional technical data on the types of pipes, the slopes um, of the existing and proposed utilities were added. Irrigation of the landscaping between the building and the parking lot was added. And a low aesthetic wooden guardrail uh, along Hazard Avenue was added uh, for public safety. A lot of these, and, and that uh, covers the, uh, the, the changes, a lot of the changes um, had to do with the request to install the uh, buffered landscapes as early and quickly as possible. And the idea was to get the screening in place and the buffering in place from the residential areas um, during the construction process. So where the landscaped area was originally proposed, we had topsoil material storage piles there. We had um, uh, some snow storage areas there um, and, and some TSTs and things like that. Those were all moved out of there so the landscaping could be put in as quickly as possible. Uh, so some of these changes, it's just a matter of, it used to be here, now it's over here. Um, that was the reasoning behind a lot of that. If you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them to the best of my ability. Does anyone have any questions for him or? I'm still looking at Okay. <laughs> Give us a minute. No problem. <laughs> I, 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 I'm usually standing up, pointing, and talking, but yeah. I'm trying to follow along. I, I, today. I just have a quick I question. Today. <laughs> I have a question. Uh, the southeast depression, the depression on the southeast side of the building, now that hasn't moved or been. The existing one? Yes. No, it hasn't. Okay. No. no. What was the purpose for moving the snow storage area? You moved it to the parking lot? Parking yeah, place? we moved it to a, a bank of parking up, up in the um, northwest area to get it out of the, there was, originally the, right now the, the landscape buff pretty much goes all the way to the curb. Yeah. It was originally was brought back to exactly 35 feet. So there was like a bank of grass between the landscape buffer and the curb line in the parking area. Now that, and that's where the snow storage area was, in the bank of grass between the parking and the landscape buffer. Now that the landscape buffer was increased, there's really no room for a snow storage area there. Mm -hmm. So we have to figure out another spot. So we have uh, more than the required parking. So up in the uh, northwest area, I think it takes up nine or, I think nine or, it's actually shown on the layout. Yeah, it is. Uh, it might take up nine parking spaces. Yeah. Uh, 12 parking spaces. Yeah. So during a winter like this year, you'd have snow in that bank of parking 
um, that bank of parking would not be available, but it would not be required to meet the zoning regulations. Question for you: Your snow storage area it looks like it's going to be right on top of a catch basin. Before, and it's the last catch basin before going into the detention basin. Yes, it would. So, is there going to be any extra protection on that catch basin then during the winter months to prevent, um, you know, all that sediments and we're, soils? We're that, not that proposing that any. Um, the design of the catch of the reten detention area acts as a four bay. Mm -hmm. uh, so before it gets into the the discharge area. Um, there's almost like a, a temporary sediment trap, yeah. which would then fill up and then run out. And that temporary, that four bay area would have to be maintained sure. regularly. Absolutely. Um, so <laughs> that, that was going to be my next comment. <laughs> so that would, um, that really is the only uh, protection we have before uh, that would go into the uh, detention area, into the drainage system. And the catch basins have sumps too, so basin, that would also help with sumps, the. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to get it. We can increase the sump on that catch basin if you prefer, or right now they're, they're two foot sumps, I imagine. We could put a four foot sump on that. I'm not entirely sure if that's under our purview to specify depths of catch basin sumps. That sounds like it would be more of a planning and zoning call. I think call. you're correct. However, I would like to point out that I didn't see, and I don't know if you're in, if this is of a concern of yours, but I didn't see any. Uh, maintenance schedule on the plans. Um, you know, you have concerns about the four bay, but I don't see anything. In other words, who's going to maintain them? Is there a necessary, uh, like once a year, uh, once every so many months? Well, the state does, the state of Connecticut requires like the catch basins to be cleaned twice a year before uh, in April. Uh, before the end of April, after the snow melt, is when the catch basins are supposed to be cleaned of sediment and debris. And typically, then again in the fall, after the leaves all fall is down. Is that on private property? Uh, I don't think so. Well, I'm not I'm sure what the size on that is. I know certainly it's for MS4s, and it's certainly with. Well, um, usually there's a like schedules the large on plans malls. for catch yeah. basins. I'm just. I was saying that more for in, for informational purposes. That that's a typical schedule oh, for cleaning. I oh, I, is I that the, that larger facilities have to have to so adhere to. Year. So typically, one at least once a year for the catch basins, and then um, certainly there's in the Connecticut stormwater manual. There's there's um, guidelines for maintenance of various types of ponds and whatnot. And, and depending on the type of system you have, it can be anywhere like five to seven years or even annually, like I said, depending on the system. So it's just something they would have to check every year and, and to see how, if it's, because if you get too much sediment in the bottom of your pond, it affects the capacity. And then obviously you want to have to clean it out. On, on sheet eight, the second column, we have post-construction inspection, inspection and maintenance. Has a general statement that it talks about Parking area surface cleaning between April 1st and June 1st. Catch basin needs to be inspected annually between May 1st and September 15th. Storm drainage pipes and structures, elder protection, and vegetative waterways, other control structures, and mowing. Um, if you want that beefed up a little bit uh, to be maybe a little more. Catch basins. No, nope. I missed that. I apologize. Oh, no problem. <laughs> That was what I was looking for and missed. I think what you've got here for, for maintenance is sufficient yes. for okay. what you need on the yes. plan. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thanks. Does anybody else have any comments or concerns? No? no Questions? No. no, I think we covered it. Does anybody want to make a motion? A 
I'll make an emo a motion to approve Inland Wetlands number 539.02, modif <laughs> modification of approved plans for proposed medical building at 160 Hazard Avenue, Huntington Chase Development, LLC is the owner. I'll second the motion. Any discussion or comments? No. Yeah. Can we have roll? We'll take a vote. <laughs> uh, Donna Corbin Zbinski? Uh, four. Elizabeth Davis? Four. John Hayes? Four. And Jane Smith? Four. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, next on the agenda is new business item in Wetlands permit number 561. It's permit for new new curb cut on Print Shop Road and eight new parking spaces at 99 Print Shop Road. NIP owner, uh, the second LLC owner. Could you please come forward and state your name for the record? And For the record, my name is Jonathan Zurich with Megson Hegel and Friends Civil Engineers in Glastonbury. Um, here tonight representing the applicant NIP Owner 2 LLC for a wetland permit um, for activity on property located at 99 Print Shop Road. Uh, the site is located in an I-1 zone. Um, it's about 5.14 acres in area. Um, as you look at the map, north is straight up and down. The property boundary is highlighted in yellow. There's an existing building in the easterly portion of the site that's highlighted in red. Um, there are wetlands on the property located in the northwesterly corner of the property. It totals about 5,564 square feet of wetlands on the site. Topography is relatively flat and slopes toward the, the south of the property where there is a drainage channel that runs the length of the south property line. Um, that drainage channel has an upland review area associated with it and the work required to install this curb cut would be entirely within that upland review area. <clears throat> the proposal is for a new access in the southeast corner of the site. If you look at the plan on the easel, it's shaded in gray in the southeast corner. Um, currently, uh, vehicles entering this site need to go through a gate that's at the um, end of Print Shop Road, go up around the corner toward the Lego building, and then back toward the south to get into this parking lot. And there is a loading dock on the building to the north, and there's a lot of truck traffic that these vehicles have to contend with to get in and out of the parking lot. So they'd like to install a new curb cut on the southeasterly corner so that they won't have to contend with the truck traffic. Um, <clears throat> they also propose to remove the existing gate and control island that's in the center of Print Shop Road. They don't use those gates anymore for security and it's just in the way for snow plowing and all of that. So as part of this, they want to remove that small island as well. <clears throat> in order to construct the curb cut and entrance, uh, some parking spaces will be lost due to the entrance way. And um, there's also two new grass islands on the left and right hand side of the entrance. And 
those will take the place of existing spaces that were there. To, to make up for the spaces that were lost from the entrance, um, plus the restriping of handicapped spaces to bring them up to current code, uh, they were put in with smaller aisles than what the current code calls for. So uh, five handicapped spaces will be restriped and eight new parking spaces will be constructed to the south of the building to make up for that parking that was lost for the entrance and the restriping of the uh, handicapped spaces. They will also pick up two new spaces. Of, of those eight, two of them will be new that we didn't have before. As um, <clears throat> mitigation for the work that's being done within the Upland Review area, they propose to remove an existing basketball court that is on the westerly half of the site. Uh, it's highlighted in green on that map. They're going to rip out the basketball court and turn that back into grass. They don't use it anymore, and right now it's just impervious area that they don't need, so they would like to remove that and turn it back into grass. So this plan actually results in a reduction of impervious and increase in green space of 3,466 square feet. Um, <clears throat> The wetland characteristics for that small wetland in the northwest corner is primarily a red maple swamp, and the wetlands along the south border is um, a man-made drainage channel. Um, they basically intercepted the groundwater when they dug the channel, so it meets the definition of a water course. <clears throat> There's also an existing detention basin immediately south of the basketball court and that will remain and that's shown on the plan. No changes to that are proposed. <clears throat> For erosion controls we're proposing silt sacks and all the existing catch basins during construction to entrap any sediment that may occur. Um, it's a very small area of disturbance. Total disturbance on the site will be 7,149 square feet. So it's not a lot of disturbance. Um, that's basically it in a nutshell, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you. Any questions? Or? We're still open. We're still open. Sure. <laughs> the basketball court that's going to be removed, yes. it, it's going to go back to grass. Is there any future... Um, plans for that area? Is, will it be there, signage? Will it be... Right it's now, just it's going just to be going to be grass and left natural. Okay. Um, there were plans in the works for maybe a potential uh, parking lot expansion toward that area, but there's nothing proposed at this time. Okay. I don't see any plans, and maybe I'm just missing it, for um, erosion controls after that area, that basketball court is taken out um, there's, to protect um, the, I, I don't, I can't, I, it doesn't look like there's a fence or anything around that existing pond, so oh, it's, is there surface flow in that direction? It's, it's basically dead flat. You can see the contours there. The it's, yeah. If you'd like uh, a row of silt fence along that southerly corner, we could add that to the plan. Um, but it'll be immediately loamed and seeded with permanent cover as soon as the court is removed. So I guess it's, yeah, I mean, I think it'd be prudent to put a, a row of uh, silt fence in there just for, because it will take time for the seed to actually grow. We so, can, you know, weather conditions being what they are in New England, <laughs> we'll you don't want it washing away we'll either. Add a row of silt fence along that southern yeah. And 
Any other comments, concerns, questions? Still reviewing. <clears throat> I have another question. Um, the drainage easement on the south side of the property. Now that intersects Print Shop Road. Is that just? Do you know if that's pipe under there or? Correct. There's a 48-inch pipe under Print Shop Road. Okay. And then the area that you're proposing to cut away in here. Yes. It looks like it's fairly close, but that shouldn't be a. Do you anticipate any issues with the proximity of the pipe or anything? No. The yeah. the pipe is about. 40 feet away from the curb cut. Okay. So we don't anticipate any issues. And um, the, the pavement is relatively flat from one side to the other. It's basically removing grass and adding some pavement. Right. right. Okay, thank you. We have a question for Jenny. Yeah, there's a little confusion. On uh, some of the paperwork, it says it's applicant 562, and on others, it's 561. Originally, there was a mistake in the book when it was brought in. It's really 562. It's 562? Um, there were two 561s by, in error when it was uh, accepted. Um, we didn't call the applicant because I don't think they care about the number as long as they get their approval. Um, so you're going to approve it as 562, but did you want to add the condition for the silt fence until the stabilization? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. I think we're in agreement on that? Yeah. Yes. Do the, plans or anything? Do the plans or anything need to get remarked for your files? Because my set says 561 on the plan itself. We can do that. Just, uh, the just file, to keep the file your tracks. The itself <laughs> says 562, but we won't. Yes, it sure. does. I just wanted to uh, <clears throat> yep. bring Not it. a problem. It's confusing me. So. Yeah. It confused me, too. That's why I went to, the, to, the, um, to check it out. Hmm. That looks good. That looks nice. Any other questions, concerns? Do we have a motion? Are we ready for a motion? I put for motion to approve inland wetland applicant 561 permit for new curb cut. 562. Oh, 562. <laughs> <laughs> After we just changed that. <laughs> so applicant 562, permit for new curb cut onto Print Shop Road and eight new parking spaces on 88 Print Shop 99. Road, NIP. 99. 99 Print Shop Road, NIP owner to LLC owner with added conditions of silt fence till the stabilization is finished. Do you have a second? I will second that. Any discussion? No. Can we have a roll call, please? I should have that paperwork in front of me. Donna Corbin-Spinski. Approve. Elizabeth Davis. Approve. John Hayes. Approve. And Jane Smith. Approve. Uh, four approvals. All, all in favor. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, at this time, I don't see anything else on the agenda. Is there a motion to adjourn? Put a motion to adjourn. A second? I will second that. Okay. All in favor? Motion to adjourn approved.